What is up, Genshin community? The never-aging Farzan is here in Zhao Mains. It is finally your time to shine. Releasing alongside Scaramouche in patch 3.3, Farzan is the animo support most of us have been dreaming of. Before we get into all the details, make sure to hit the subscribe and like button. I love putting out early guides for people to get an idea on the characters they're going to be building in the near future. Also, feel free to go to the link down below and join the Discord to pick up this Farzan farming guide from the Sip Sip Squad created to make your life a whole lot easier. Easier. Let's break down Farazan's kit so you know exactly why she's a coveted support unit. Farazan's E ability is Wind Realm. She throws out a polyhedron that deals AoE animal damage to opponents. At level 10, this first instance of damage deals 267.8% damage. After this polyhedron is deployed, she'll enter a state known as Manifest Gale. Farazan's next fully charged shot will consume the state and fire off a hurricane arrow. This arrow groups enemies and applies pressurized collapse to the target, causing an additional 100 194% damage to enemies nearby. Pressurized Collapse does not need to hit a target and will apply to its point of impact. Farazan's first pass reduces the charge shot time by 60% and also allows Farazan to apply the wind's secret way, Perfidious Wind's Bail, to opponents. This debuff decreases animal resistance by 30%. Farazan's burst is the wind's secret ways, where Farazan deals a large burst of animo damage, 679% at level 10. When deploying a dazzling polyhedron, it is unleashes a whirlwind pulse. The polyhedron will travel in a triangular path and at each point will release an additional whirlwind pulse. Whirlwind pulse applies the wind's secret ways, perfidious wind's bail to opponents, reducing all animal resistance by 30%. It also applies an additional buff called prayerful wind benefits to all nearby party members, increasing animo damage by 32.4% at level 10. Farazan's exploration passive is an additional 25% more rewards on Sumeru expeditions. Farazan's second second ascension passive applies an additional buff every time her burst applies prayerful wind's benefit to a party member. If this member deals animo damage, this damage will increase by 32% of Farazan's base attack. Base attack is calculated by her own scaling attack and weapon attack. This buff is only for one instance of damage and then will drop off after. When it comes to talent priority, I would personally level the burst first to guarantee you get the most animo damage possible and then the skill for those who want to increase overall team-wide party damage. Normal attacks can be ignored. Farazan's constellations are as follows. C1, Farazan can fire off two hurricane arrows in the manifest gale state. This allows her to have an additional CC as well as an additional charge to reduce resistance with. C2, the duration of Farazan's burst is increased by 6 seconds to 18 from 12. C4, Farazan will restore energy based on the number of enemies hit by pressurized collapse created by her hurricane arrows. A total of 4 energy can be restored per vortex. C6, characters who receive the animo damage buff from Farazan's burst will also receive an additional 40% increased crit damage when they deal animo damage. On top of that, this damage will also apply pressurized collapse, applying additional CC. Farazan's constellation priority is sadly C6 in my opinion. The insane 40% crit damage bonus for animo damage is just too good to ignore, plus extra crowd control is always welcomed. C1 is also a great buff, allowing Farazan to upkeep animo shred more consistently, and C2 provides a longer burst, which will also provide an additional buff uptime. When it comes to weapons with Farazan, you have a few options that are most likely being held by your other party members as they are very popular options for both support users. The top option because it provides so many bonuses is Elegy of the End, giving party-wide elemental mastery as well as party-wide attack percent. Another option is Ammo Spow for more personal damage with her charge attacks as well as a good amount of damage being shared with her A4 passive. For even more damage with her A4 passive, go with Skyward Heart. For a more supportive role to guarantee high uptime on both the Animo Shred and Animo Damage bonus, go with either Favonius or Sacrificial Bow. You could take even Maloon's Moon to take Farazan's Burst damage to the next level. Farazan has a few artifact options that I'm sure you have very much come accustomed to grinding out. The lovely 4-piece Severed Fate is a go-to option providing great burst uptime as well as additional burst damage. 4-piece Noblesse Oblige can be ran on Farazan if it is not ran on a different character on your team. On non-animo focused teams or teams more focused on Sorrel Reactions, Farazan could even take 4-piece Viridescent Venera. Farazan is best paired with a main DPS animo unit. Scaramouche, Hazo, and Zhao are all amazing to pair with Farazan. 
on, utilizing them fully for both Animo Damage and Animo Resistance Shred. Animo Resistance Shred is pretty hard to come by these days, making Farazon a must-have on teams. Scaramouche Electro Charge is great for AoE damage with decent single-target potential from Scaramouche and Fischl C6. Hazo Flaming Fist takes advantage of Bennett and Zhongling's high damage output while allowing Hazo to swirl and weave in his own attacks. Farazon can provide some much-needed CC and additional damage for Hazo. Zhao's team comp finally gives him a dedicated support, which he desperately needed. Zhao has always suffered from awkward team compositions, so it's nice that Zhao mains finally get something after waiting so long. Farazon was indeed a much-needed character for Genshin Impact. Animo main DPS units have always suffered from similar issues, being unable to lower resistances because C4 gene is obviously not accessible, and on top of that, many animal units revolve around swirl reactions and struggle to find a balance between personal damage and elemental mass rescaling to a level similar to top DPS units like Ganyu and Hu Tao. At least now with Farazan, animal main DPS units now and in the future will be able to focus on more personal damage while utilizing Farazan's many bonuses. If you plan on playing any animal units now and in the future, I think investing into Farazan is a great option. Thank you guys so much for watching this early beta build guide for Farazan. If you're looking for any of my other ones, make sure to check out the playlist on my channel for all the early beta build guides. And let me know down in the comments below if you're pulling for Scaramouche or if you're just pulling for Farazan for Zhao and Hazel mains out there. Likes and comments are always appreciated as it pushes this video on the algorithm and you can get all of the information and all of these sheets in the description down below. Thank you guys so much for watching and I will see you in the next one.